Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire in I'll Be Seeing You. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And to those greetings, may I add our heartiest wishes for a very Merry Christmas. It's a privilege for me, for all of us, to share the enjoyment of this peacetime Christmas Eve with you. Traditionally, Christmas brings people closer together, and that's what happens in our play tonight. The poignant story of two people who find themselves very much in love, but whose yuletide happiness is shadowed by a strange threat. It's David O. Selznick's screen hit, I'll Be Seeing You, starring Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire. In true holiday spirit, one of our listeners in the East has just written me of a Christmas relief bundle that she and a group of women sent to friends and relatives in Lavik, Norway. Knowing that that country hadn't received a scrap of wool in five years, they collected all the woolen garments they could find, sweaters, caps, gloves, socks, dresses. Then, she adds, we knew we must send Lux Flakes to care for them. And so those cheerful blue and white packages of Lux Flakes became an important part of our Christmas bundle. To Mrs. Sorensen, the author of that kind deed, all our thanks. And I'm sure she and her friends will have the lasting thanks of Christmas-cheered Norwegians. Here's the first act of, I, of one of I'll Be Seeing You, starring Joseph Cotton as Zachary Morgan and Dorothy McGuire as Mary Marshall. On the 24th of December, just one year ago, a girl left the warden's office of the state prison for women. She walked across the wide courtyard to a massive iron gate. What's your number? 40721. Here's my pass. Mm, Mary Marshall? Yes. Wait a minute. Yes? Shelby, North Gate, 40721 with a pass. Let her out. Okay, thanks. You're free as a bird, girlie. How long? Till the 1st. Remember that. Till January 1st. And don't cross the state line. I'll remember. And don't forget, we'll be holding that nice little room for you. And on that same morning, in a different section of the same city... I can't tell you how glad I am to see you getting out of the hospital, Sergeant. Thanks, Doctor. I, I wish I had a little more of your confidence. You're not entirely well, no. But the only thing that's holding you back is yourself. I'll do my best. What... What if I should get one of those uh, spells while I'm away? It's possible you will. Call a doctor and then get in touch with us or any other army hospital. Just avoid excitement. Don't tire yourself. Yes, sir. Remember, Zach, you're a normal human being. You've been sick, and now you're getting well. Now, let's see. Your leave will be over when? New Year's Day. Just have a good time, Zach. Good luck, and I'm proud of you. Thanks, Doctor. It's quite an adventure getting out in the world again. But I'll be fine. I'm sure I'll be fine. And that's how, an hour or so later, a girl named Mary Marshall and a soldier named Zachary Morgan looked at each other from opposite seats of a westbound train. Excuse me, but you dropped your magazine. What? Here, your magazine. You dropped it. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Going home on a furlough, Sergeant? I'm on a furlough. They, they gave me a furlough. You? Oh, I'm taking a vacation. Christmas vacation. Oh. Uh, what sort of work do you do? Well, I, I, I travel. A traveling saleswoman. Um, sales lady. <laughs> well, I never heard any jokes about traveling sales ladies. <laughs> Guess there aren't any. You know, I, I would have guessed you were a secretary or a model, maybe, a school teacher. <laughs> well, I, I was once a secretary, and I wanted to be a model, so that would have been pretty good guessing. Going to Los Angeles? Oh, no, I get off quite soon at Pine Hill. Oh, is that your home? No, I'm just visiting my aunt and uncle. That's funny. I, 
I'm going to Pine Hill, too. Uh, my sister lives in Pine Hill. Oh, oh, I'll bet she'll be crazy to see you. I hope so. Maybe we'll run into each other there. Yes. Say, uh, would you like a cup of coffee or something, a sandwich? Uh, well, uh, I, yes, I would. Good. I, I think there's a club car or something down this way. I, oh, 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 I'm my, sorry. My fault. I'm pretty clumsy. I keep bumping into people all the time. Yes, I, I think it's down this way. Taxi lady, taxi. Oh, yes, please. Well, goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye. Oh, oh wait, wait. If uh, if anybody tried to phone you, uh, how could they get you? Well, my uncle's in the book, Henry Marshall. Henry Marshall. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, well, uh, what's your name? Mary. Mary Marshall. Mary Marshall. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, if uh, somebody calls and says it's Zachary Morgan, that that's me. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad to know you. Have a good vacation. I will. You too. Oh, uh, hey, mister. Yes? You happen to know of any hotels around here? Well, there's just one, Sergeant, but it's filled up. Is there a YMCA? Why, uh, yes. You see that church steeple back there? Well, that's Center Street. Just turn to your left and you run right into it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Turn luck, Sergeant. Just this one room left. It'll do fine. I'll take it. Staying here for long, are you? A week or so. I'm... Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, about the rent. No I... hurry, boy. Just stop at the desk sometime. And if there's anything you want, you just holler. Thanks, I will. Don't get worried, Zach. Don't get worried. You've got a problem, sure, but it's simple. You ought to hang up your coat, unpack your bag, and put everything neatly away without dropping anything or bumping into the furniture. You think you can do that? Well, let's try. That bayonet wound is all healed, but the wound in your mind... The wound in your mind is... It'll take a little longer. Don't get too tired. Don't give in. Then you won't get any of the... uh, Those things that wind up with a shot in the arm or or an ice pack or that, that little room... What's the matter, Zach? Forgot, forgot where you were for a moment. It's all right. You'll get well. You'll get well. You'll get well. Oh, just let me look at you, Mary. Why, you haven't changed at all, dear. Not at all. Thank you, Aunt Sarah. Oh, it's good to be here. We're so glad to have you. <laughs> Barbara! Mary's here. You can share Barbara's oh, room, dear. I, I don't want to disturb anybody. Oh, Nancy's now here. Give me your coat. Barbara's 17, 17. now. 17? Mm-hmm. Oh. She's pretty spoiled, though. I think an older girl will be a very good thing for her right now. <laughs> well, there's a million things to talk about, but first, you want to wash up. Hi, Mary. Barbara! Why, Aunt Sarah, she's a beauty. Welcome <laughs> home. Take Mary up to your room, dear. If you're busy, Barbara, I can... Just follow me, lady, to my boudoir. <laughs> Some boudoir, practically no bigger than a... Th- Barbara. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. Now, look. We all know I've been in prison, and I'm going back to prison. So it just isn't right for anybody to try and cover up. You're a wonderful girl, Mary. Now, run on up, dear. Take that bag, Barbara. Well, here we are, Mary. All the comforts of home. Mm, it's nice, Barbara. We have our own bathroom. See? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Mary, I was just thinking that that's nothing nice suit you have on. Well, thank you. You were thinking something else, too. Well, I guess I was. I just... Well, well, I never knew they gave vacations to people. Well, I didn't know about it either, Barbara, until the warden told me. Yes, in certain states... They give special furloughs to people for good behavior. Oh, I think it's wonderful they have that confidence in you. Yes, I think so, too. Well, I'd better wash up. There are two towel racks, Mary. Yours is on the left. Thank you. And the soap. Um, There are two bars here. Yes, I I thought you might like a new cake. It's right there. Mary? Yes, I heard you. I'm not using your soap. Well, I'll, I'll run along downstairs. Thank you, Barbara. But first I want to hear about Uncle Henry How is he? Oh, fine, dear Except he works too hard That darn drugstore of his Oh, I've been so anxious to see him, Aunt Sarah And you Mm, That's sweet of you, dear But I guess you'd be happy to see, well, anybody 
Has it been bad, Mary? Oh, I've survived. It's just this feeling I get about coming out into the world again. Now, you listen to me. You did something, and you're paying your debt to society. Most people will be willing to let it go at that. I know, but I... Well, I just don't seem to belong. I don't fit in. And the dreams I've had for the future are just impossible. Well, most dreams are, dear. But I'm not talking about palaces and rainbows. I'm talking about a home like this with a kitchen and a stove and an icebox. And a husband and a child. Yes, I have all that. But I used to dream about palaces and rainbows. But you're happy. Of course, because I didn't hold out for too much. I accepted what was second best. You have to get used to accepting what you think is second best, and then you find out that it's first best after all. Oh, Barbara! I'll get it. No, I don't see how that could ever work for me. <laughs> well, I have time to think about it. Lots of time. Telephone! Coming, dear! It's for Mary. For me? Oh, it's this way, dear, in the hall. Oh. It's a man, Mary. He sounds super. <laughs> Come along with me, Barbara. We'll set the table. Hello? Oh, yes, Zach. Of course I meant it. Oh, well, what about your sister? Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'd love to, Zach, but, um... Oh, wait a minute. Aunt Sarah. Yes, dear? It's a soldier I met on the train. Oh? He came to visit his sister, but he just found out she's away and he wants me to go to dinner. But why not ask him here for dinner? May I, Aunt Sarah? Why, of course. Tell him to come right over. Hello, Zach. You ought to come here for dinner. Oh, but we want you. Hmm? Oh, 617 Elm Street. That's right. <laughs> Goodbye. Is he good-looking, Mary? Why, I don't know. Didn't you notice? Now, that's enough, Barbara. Just get the table set. Wow, we sold you for dinner. <laughs> Mother says for you to hurry. Mary sold you. will be here any minute. Oh, that's fine. Tell Mother I'll be right down. Dad. What? You know, you never told me anything about Mary. Why was she sent to prison? You can find that out some other time, when you're older. Oh, that's what Mother says. But I still don't see why I shouldn't know. Now, Mary made a little mistake, and that's all there is to it. D don't bother me now. But they don't send you to prison for just doing nothing. What if my friends ask me about her? Just tell them that Mary's your cousin. And from that point on, they can mind their own business. Seems to me that your business might be helping your mother. Oh, Dad. Barbara! Doorbell! I'll get it. I'll get it. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, th I thought this was the Marshall home. It is. Is Miss Marshall here? I'm Miss Marshall. I mean, uh, Mary Marshall. Oh, Barbara, well, she... Barbara, stop teasing that young man. Oh, I'm Mary's aunt. You're, you're Zag. Yes. Please come in. This is Barbara, my foolish daughter. Oh, hello. Hi. Hello, Zach. Oh, hello, Mary. Oh, well, you found it all right. Mary, take Zach into the living room. Make him comfortable. Henry. Here I go. Come along, Barbara. Oh, Mother. This is swell, Mary. I haven't been in a real home like this in almost as long as I can remember. It's too bad about your missing your sister. Uh, Mary, I... I'm in this house under false pretenses. I, I really haven't a sister. I just made all that up. Made it up? Yes, when you said you were getting off the train at Pine Hill, I, I had to make some, some sort of excuse so I could get off, too. Oh. Well, good evening. Oh, um, Uncle Henry, this is Sergeant Morgan, my Uncle Henry. Oh, happy to have you, you here, do. Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Very happy. Make yourself at home. Uh, <clears throat> how about a little drink? I have some bourbon. Oh, thank you. I, I'm not drinking uh, just now. Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. Neither am I. <laughs> Funny thing, people that have it don't want it. People that can't get it. Well, you ought to see the act they put on my drugstore to get that stuff. <laughs> Dinner's ready. Come and get it. Wait, Mary. Mary, you sit over here. And Zach, Thank you. down there. Thank you. And huh? Dad, now, I think you ought to be I over there. Oh, there, there, there. That's, that's it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> think I'll say a little blessing. Mm. We thank you, God, for our daily bread. Mm. We'll do our best to deserve it. Please look after all our dear ones. All the boys who are far from home, and all are in the hospitals. Amen. 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 You aren't used to saying grace, are you, Zach? Well, in the Army, I guess you don't have time. You said as if you meant it, sir. I do, Sergeant. It makes me want to say that, well, I'm grateful, too, for, well, for being here, for everything. Oh, thank you, Zach. Hey, you must be quite a soldier. Oh, I say that. Oh, let the man eat his soup. But look, the Good Conduct Medal. Two campaigns in the South Pacific and the Purple Heart. 
For heaven's sake, where'd you learn all that? Oh, girl gets to know medals like she does Boogie Woogie. But the Purple Heart, why, that means you were wounded. Oh, come on, Zach. Tell us how you got to be a hero. Barbara, and after dinner, you take off some of that lipstick. Looks as if you fell into a pot of paint. <clears throat> Sergeant, you must have been disappointed not to find your sister. Well, oh, yes. Oh, she yes, had a chance yes. to spend the holidays in California. Oh, it was quite yes. sudden. <laughs> Uh, she wasn't expecting Zach, was she? No, no, she wasn't. Zach, are you mad at me? Huh? Well, for asking all those questions. No, I'm, I'm not mad. Uh, you mad, Mary? No, I, I'm not mad. Uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Marshall? Well, and... No. <laughs> was there to be mad well, No, Barbara, I don't, I don't think anybody's mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, for heaven's sake, pitch in, everybody. Pitch in. <laughs> After a brief intermission, we'll bring you Act Two of I'll Be Seeing You, starring Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire. Every screen picture started as an idea in the mind of a writer. Tonight, Betty Bryant, wife of Leslie Charteris, one of Hollywood's most famous writer of mystery stories, is here as our guest. Mr. Charteris wrote the famous Saint series and Universal's current thriller, Lady on a Train. Tell me, Betty, I hear Leslie writes very rapidly. What's his secret? Well, for one thing, he never changes a word. Hmm, sounds like genius. He says he really doesn't like writing. He'd rather cook. He does that too. Yes, and I don't mean just steaks and chops. Some of his more sensational recipes take a day to do. Hmm, the most I can handle is scrambled eggs. You know, if I didn't know Leslie had written so many exciting stories, I'd say he'd missed his vocation. Which of his mysteries is your favorite? Well, my favorite story is Saint Overboard, but my real favorite is something the public's never read. The letter Leslie wrote asking me to marry him. He wrote you instead of asking you in person? Well, you see, I was singing in New York, and he was working here in Hollywood. And now you're both, both here. Tell me, what does Leslie do besides work? Well, we both love to take our trailer for a quick vacation. Mm, doesn't that mean extra work for you? I like it. We take a minimum of baggage and a box of trusty Lux Flakes, Mr. Keeley. Lux is a wonderful fresher upper after a dusty ride. You know, for things like underthings and blouses. Oh, I'm sure John Kennedy likes to hear you say that, Betty. Yes, and thousands of women all over the country agree with Mrs. Charteris. They've discovered that Lux Care keeps pretty undies, as well as other nice washables, lovely much longer. In actual tests, slips and nighties washed with strong soap, hot water, and rough handling soon looked faded and drab. But with Lux Care, the identical garments stayed lovely three times as long. I don't doubt it, Mr. Kennedy. And if Santa brings me some pretty new lingerie for Christmas you can be sure that I shall continue to use Lux Care. Well, Betty, I hope Santa is listening in, and many thanks for being with us. We continue with Act Two of I'll Be Seeing You, starring Joseph Cotton as Zack and Dorothy McGuire as Mary. It's about three hours since dinner time, and down on Main Street, Zack and Mary are just walking out of the lobby of Pine Hills Movie Theater. Zack's face is strained and drawn as he takes Mary's arm and heads aimlessly down the street. What's the matter, Zack? Chilly? Hmm? Oh, oh, no, no, not chilly. <laughs> I, I don't know where you're walking. We go the other way. Oh, uh, sorry. Zack, what's the matter? I just... Nothing, nothing's the matter. It was the picture, wasn't it, about the war? Zack, why didn't you say something? It, it wasn't such a bad picture. Is war really like that? I guess so. You guess so? Well, they have experts making those pictures. I, I guess that's the way they see the war. A beach a mile long and thousands of soldiers and tanks and machine guns. I, I guess that's the way it is. It wasn't that way for you. Well, it, it, it's just the difference in size. To a guy that's in it, the war is about ten feet wide and kind of empty. It, it, it's you and a couple of fellows from your company, maybe, and, and the Japs. It, you know, it's, it's all kind of mixed up. Sometimes it's all full of noise, and sometimes it's quiet. It depends on what you're thinking about, I guess. Uh, how, how scared you are, how cold you are, and how wet you are. Uh, Mary, you know what? What? I mean... Well, usually, I, I don't like to talk about the fighting. I, I never said anything about it ever before, not to anybody. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have known. No, no. 
I, I feel kind of good. Let's have a drink or something. All right. There's a place across the street. Yeah, well, let's see what it's like. Let's go across the street. This booth all right, sir? No, it's fine. Sure you... All you want is coffee? <laughs> Positive. Oh, come on. It's Christmas. Sky's the limit. Have a piece of pie with it. <laughs> Not after Aunt Sarah's dinner. <laughs> They're nice people, Mary. You're nice people, too. Here you are. Two cups of coffee. Thank you. Say, I'm an old army man myself. Cream, Mary. No, thanks. I was in France in World War Number 1. And you know what? They're kidding themselves. This is exactly the same kind of war. Sure you want to have some cream. Thanks. The Navy, Marines, Air Force. Okay, great, great, great. But this one's going to be just like the last one. A soldier like you and me. Walking out on his own two feet and slugging it out with his rifle. With his bayonet. Sugar? Hmm? Uh, oh, thanks. You got enough in that bowl? Yeah, plenty. Like I was saying, when this thing starts, I try to sign up again. I tell him I want a chance to knock a couple of Japs' heads together. I'm strong, see? Squash them like a couple of eggs, I could. But they wouldn't have me. Wouldn't let me fight. Why? On account of this. Look, look, my face, see? Yeah. Go on, go on, look, I don't mind. I see, I see. Zach, are you sure you're all it's right? It's a kind of a twitch, see? I got a little shell shock. All right, left me with this. I, nobody ever notices it, but that squirt medic, it turns me down. Now, now tell shut, up, I shut, up, shut up, shut up, shut up. What's the matter with him? Zach, where are you going? Hey, what's up, sister? Hitting the bottle, huh? Zach, please. If we walk fast, Zach, we'll get nice and warm. I'm, uh, I'm glad you like walking. Mmm, it's fine night. Oh, it's Christmas Eve. That's right, it is. Mary, I'm all right now. Thank you. Thank you for not asking any questions. Sometimes I don't like questions either. Let's just walk, hmm? Let's just walk. I'd like to ask you in, Zach, but it's late. Mary, I, and... I think you ought to know something. I wish I could tell you. I wish I could explain it. You probably think it. Well, I look fine, don't I? Healthy, don't I? Well, I am. Look, you see this rock? Yes. Well, watch. Watch me hit that lamppost down there. Oh, you're terrible. I'll bet I could do better than that. Now, watch me. Sure. All right. Thanks, Mary. Good night. Zach! Zach. <laughs> Oh, hello, Barbara. I thought you'd be asleep. I've been writing letters. Look at them all. I'm the pinup girl for five fellas. I keep up their morale, maybe. <laughs> it must be nice to help somebody's morale. Oh, you can write letters. You know, they just like to get mail from anybody. I mean, well, you, you don't have to know them awfully well, too. When I was 17, I had trouble finding the right words, too. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. I keep hurting you. That's all I do. I keep hurting you when I don't want to. I guess it's uncomfortable for you to meet somebody like me. But maybe when you get to know me, you'll feel differently. Oh, I want to know you, Mary. Really, I do. Barbara, how much do you know about me? Well, not much. Mother and Dad still treat me like a child. Everything's a big secret. I don't think it would hurt you to know. As a matter of fact, it might help. Well, Barbara, when I was 15, my mother died. Oh, I remember her. She used to make clothes for all my dolls. Mm, and not long after that, my father died. I finished school, and then I went to work. In a couple of years, I found myself working for a man, well, the kind of man you dream about when you're 19 and lonely. He was single, he was good looking, and, well, I started dreaming. Bosses do marry their secretaries. Well, one night there was a party. It was the first time he'd asked me anywhere. It was at his apartment, except that when I got there, there wasn't any party, only him. And then he wouldn't let me leave. He'd been drinking, and... Oh, it was all mixed up like some kind of terrible nightmare. Once I almost got away when he fell over a chair, but he caught me and dragged me back. And then I pushed him. I pushed him as hard as I could. And he fell back. There was a low window, and he crashed through, screaming and clawing for something to hold on to. His apartment was on the 14th floor. Oh, Mary, how awful. But it's wrong. They shouldn't have sent you to prison. If I'd been lucky enough to get away before he was killed, there wouldn't have been any crime. But a man was dead. 
The jury said manslaughter. That meant five years. Please forgive me, Mary. Oh, please. It's all right, darling. It's all right. <laughs> Hello? Is that you, Mary? Yes. This is Zach. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mary, I, I'd like to see you if I can now. It's, it's sort of important. Well, certainly, Zach. Uh, do you want to come here? The family's just going to church. Well, I, uh, Mary, I, I want to talk to you about last night, and it may take some time. <laughs> well, I have time. Plenty of time. There's the bus that leaves the railroad station. It goes up to a lake. It, they say it's pretty out there, and we can be by ourselves. Well, that'll be fine, Zach. I'll meet you at the station in 20 minutes, all right? Well, that's fine, Mary. Thank you. And just before they left for church, they insisted you come for Christmas dinner. So no arguments, now, please. Now, look, they don't know me from Adam. It's Christmas. Yes, I... it is Christmas. And I'd say that was the best reason of all why you should come. Well, well, well sure, I'll be glad to. <laughs> well, that's better. Look, there's the lake, Zach. It's not, not a very big lake, is it? <laughs> we, we can sit here on this rock if it isn't too cold. Well, let's try it out. <laughs> this reminds me of the lake I used to go to when I was a kid back in Maryland. I had a job every spring there, repairing the boats. Oh. Mary, I... I want to tell you why I got mad at that man in the coffee shop last night and why I walked away like that after I threw the rock at the lamppost and missed it. You don't have to tell me, Zach. Look, I was brought up in a home, an orphan's home. Well, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Well, I'm not. It's not like being in prison or anything like that. No. Well, in the home, uh, there was a janitor. He was a shell shock case, too. Whenever we could get our hands on any firecrackers, we'd bang them off and laugh at him. The, the way he'd jump. Well, that fellow in the coffee shop reminded me of him, and they, they both made me think of what I'd be in a few years. Only, the only difference is that now they have a fancy word for it, uh, neuropsychiatric. But doctors must know a lot more about it. Maybe they do. But they don't know something about me that I know. You see, before I, I went in for engineering... I was an athlete, a pretty good one. I know what my timing used to be. The doctors don't. It's gone, Mary. Why, why, before this happened to me, I could have hit that lamppost all day. I, why, <laughs> I don't know why I'm bothering you with all this. Yes, I do. I'm bothering you because, because I feel so much better when I talk to you. I like to be with you. I like to be with you. Mary, I, I want to talk about you. Tell me. Um, what? Well, for instance, how did you become a traveling sales lady? Well, I started out wanting to be a model, and after that I got with this dress company, and now I travel for them. Where? Well, after your vacation, where do you go? Um, back to Dallas, and then to New Orleans, Florida. Mary, can you make me believe in myself the way you believe in yourself? What makes you think I do? <laughs> I can tell. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you hold your head. <sighs> Maybe that's just pretense to impress you. Look, no, no. there's a boat down there. Yeah. Oh, not a real boat, just a toy boat. At the edge of the water, see? Oh. It's half buried there in the mud. Yeah, some little kid once owned that boat. Mm -hmm. Probably thought it could take him all around the world oh. and back. I wish it could. I wish we could get on it and... Where would you like to go? Not, not Florida or New Orleans, some place like the moon, maybe. Mm -hmm. With a good breeze, maybe we could make it. Mary, if it uh, were a real boat and the moon a real place, would you go? There's no harm in dreaming, is there, Zach? Yes, I'd go. I'd go. I'm getting to know your uncle's gate very well. This is where we were standing last night. What are you doing? Getting another stone. See how my timing is in daylight. Hey, what's the idea of knocking it out of my hand? I'm not going to have you run out on me again. <laughs> now, come on in the house. Here it comes, everybody. Oh, Love pudding. Well, oh, it ought to be another bite. Oh, 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 o
confusing, Henry. Well, look. You no, know, I never could figure it out. If the plum pudding is on fire, why doesn't it ever get burned? It must be the alcohol and the brandy. I guess that's it. <laughs> Personally, I think that's a terrible waste of good cognac. Oh, don't worry, Henry. There's lots left. Oh, I wouldn't trust Mom with it, Dad. Oh, no, I'm not going to listen to that again. <laughs> you may not believe this about your dear Aunt Sarah, Mary, but last year she got as high as a Oh, cotton. Henry, <laughs> nothing. They're trying to drag out a family skeleton, Mrs. Marshall, and won't listen. True as I sit here. Had a glass of sherry to bring in the new year, and by George, you should have seen her. She did about everything but hang. Oh, now, see here, Henry. If you're in such good voice, how about a Christmas carol? Mm, something tells me Aunt Sarah's trying to change the subject. Well, nothing of the sort. Christmas carols go with plum pudding, and that's what we're eating, plum pudding. All right, darling, all right. <coughs> What'll it be? Oh, I think I like Little Town of Bethlehem best. Fine. A little Town of Bethlehem it is. <coughs> Mimi. <coughs> Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. Well, Jack, it's pretty good having another man around here. I, I can't quite tell you how I feel. This is the best Christmas I ever had. To think that, that, that you wanted me here, that you all had presents for me. Well, yesterday, I was a stranger here. I, I, I mean, I, I felt like a prisoner inside myself. Oh. Now... <laughs> Well, just to be in a home like this, maybe some place I can come back to next month or oh, next year. Oh, excuse well, me, please. Did I say something? Oh, oh, no, Zach, no. It's just that Mary's sentimental. Especially at Christmas. Oh, I'd better... Oh, Mary, Mary. It, it's all right. I'm, I'm just so silly. Well, is it anything I, I did, Mary? Anything to do with what I, I talked about at the lake? It's just a combination of things. The plum pudding and the singing and the very nice things you said. Mary, maybe I'd better get out of here. Oh, it isn't polite to eat. I didn't mean just this house. I meant Pine Hill. I ought to leave you alone. You're just fishing. You just want me to ask you to stay. Well, ask me. Please stay, Zach. Mary, I... I'd stay forever if I could. Forever? Time to go turn in, I guess. It's been a big day. Mm, and I had to spoil it with that scene at dinner. Now, honey, we'll have no more of that. Barbara? Coming! Might have happened to any girl. Could have been just Christmas sentiment. Well, good night, Mary. Good night, Uncle Henry. Aunt Sarah? Yes, dear? I've been wondering if I should tell him about me. Not for the world. But why? Zach trusts me, and, well, it just doesn't seem fair. But he'll only be here for a few days. Why, he mentioned that just now, just before he left. He's lonely, and you're making things pleasant for him. That's not the reason I'm seeing him. I like him, Aunt Sarah. I like him a lot. Well, I assume that, or else you wouldn't have asked him to the New Year's dance. But it isn't as if you were going to marry him. No. It's not as if I were going to marry him. Oh, Mary, dear, I didn't mean it like that. I know. Have fun, Mary. See Zach every day, if you like. Just act like any other girl. I try, Aunt Sarah, but I, I just can't seem to make myself feel like any other girl. I, I just feel like me. And that's pretty darn good, if you ask me. Hey, you two, what's cooking? Just remember, Mary, I don't think so. Uh, good night, dear. Good night. night. She doesn't think so. What? She doesn't think there really is a Santa Claus. Huh? Oh. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 
Our stars, Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire, will return with Act Three of I'll Be Seeing You after a brief intermission. Let's pretend we can see into the future. It's Christmas morning at the Browns, and Betty and Jane are opening their presents. Jane reaches for a package from Aunt Sue. Oh, let's open Aunt Sue's together, Betty. They're probably both alive. I wonder what she spent this time. Oh, oh look, stockings. Oh, no, not nylons. No, but they're lovely and sheer. Well, I can use anything I can get my foot in. I'm down to my last pair of stockings. Look, three pairs. Oh, swell. I'll see me through a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Why, these will last me for months. So, about a month later, the girls were dressing one morning when... Oh, doggone it, there goes a run. Well, there's the last of my Christmas stockings. Guess little Janie will have to go shopping for herself. Oh, look, Betty. <laughs> you couldn't lend me a pair for today, could you? <laughs> Guess so. Look in the top drawer. Say, aren't these your Christmas ones? Uh-huh. Well, haven't you worn them much? Of course. But I luxed them. What do you do with yours? Well, I... Well, I'm not fussy like you. I used anything that happened to be handy. Hmm, well, I still have three pairs and no runs. Okay, I guess it serves me right. Don't I get to borrow these, then? Oh, sure. Look, I'll even let you keep this pair, but there's a string to it. Use Lux. If you don't get twice the wear you did from your others, you'll have to buy me a new pair. It's a deal. I'll certainly play safe and Lux them. It's a safe bet that if Jane does Lux her stockings after every wearing, she will cut runs way down. Because strain tests have proved that with Lux, stockings retain their elasticity much longer. They don't go into runs nearly so quickly as stockings washed with strong soap or rubbed with cake soap. For extra wear, give stockings gentle Lux care. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We bring you the third act of I'll Be Seeing You, starring Joseph Cotton as Zack and Dorothy McGuire as Mary. Seven days have passed since Zack Morgan and Mary Marshall stepped off a train together at Pine Hill. Christmas has come and gone, and now Pine Hill, like all the troubled world, waits with eager hope the coming of the new year. All the towns gather tonight for the annual dance at the YMCA. My goodness, Zach, there isn't a woman here with prettier corsages. You've thanked the man a dozen times. Let him alone. <laughs> and Sarah's right, Uncle Henry. You're just afraid Zach's spoiling it. Well, maybe I am. But flowers make you feel so like a party. Oh, there's Amy Anderson. Wait till she sees my lovely camellias. Well, that's my cue, Zach. I guess she wants me to leave you and Mary alone. Alone in this crowd? <laughs> How about a dance, Mary? I'd love to, Zach. You know, Mary, two weeks ago, if somebody had told me I'd be dancing with a girl like you, you know what I'd have said? What would you have said? I'd have said, I wouldn't be dancing with a girl <laughs> like you. You know, I used to be pretty good at this sort of stuff. Once, uh, Well, what's happened to the orchestra? Somebody must have tipped them off. Confidentially, it's just 10 seconds to 1945. New Year's! Uh -huh. Ladies and gentlemen, may I be the first to wish you all a very happy New Year! Yeah! Happy New Year, Mary. Happy New Year, Zach. I'm glad you wanted to walk home, Mary. It sure is a swell night. Mm, so beautiful I could... No, what in the world is that coming down the street? Oh, just some kids in the jalopy. Oh, what a racket. They're shooting something. Just firecrackers. Back? It's all right, Mary. It's all right. I feel fine. Oh, look, they're throwing them. They're throwing them over the fence there. That dog. Oh, that's really a dog, too, isn't it? I don't mind saying I'm glad he's chained. Well, don't you believe in that saying about barking dogs? Well. Oh, look at him. He's tugging at his chain. Well, Mary, you're scared. Oh, he's such a big dog. Zach, maybe we better cross the street. Oh, now, now, Mary. The thing about a dog is you must never let him know you're afraid of him. You have to treat him like an old friend. Now, watch me. Here. Here, boy. Here. Here. Oh, yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, I'd hate to run into him in a dark street. Well, what do you think this is? Mary, look out. He's loose. He's jumping the fence. Zach. Stay away, Mary. Stay away. I didn't handle him. Get back. I didn't handle him. Get it on. I'm getting it, mister. Hang on now. I'm looking around at the tree. All right. Turn him loose. 
fast now. I'm back up fast, Mr. Fast. There. You, you hurt, Mr. You, you hurt? Uh, I, I'm all right. Oh, Zach, Zach. It's a good thing you kept your wits wrapping that coat around your arm. That's the smartest thing you could have done, Mr. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure sorry, Mr. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Come on out. Come along, Mary. Come on out. I can't stop shaking. You'll be all right in a minute. I'll be all right. I thought he'd tear you to pieces. Just a few scratches from his claws. He didn't bite me. Oh. You know something? What? Don't you realize what you've done? What? I'll bet you couldn't have done that a week ago. Done what? Oh, not just now with the dog. I mean all evening. I've watched you all the time. You've never hesitated for words and your eyes haven't blinked. And, and then just now I... Well, I've never seen anyone whose reactions were so fast. I didn't even think about what I was doing. And that's just it. And your timing. It was perfect. I hope you're right. I believe you are. Mary, yesterday you you told me that in a week's time you can do a lot of believing. Well, you see, I'm that fellow that's on the radio that says life can be beautiful. You're beautiful. Uh, you're just saying that because you know I've got lots of money. You're wonderful. Because you know I have very influential friends. You're wonderful. Because of my social position. Wonderful. Zach, we're home. Yes. Mary, I, I know now I'm going to get well. And I've got plans, lots of them. And you figure in all my plans. You've got to figure in them, because without you, I... Oh, I'm back where I started. I'm sunk. Zach, let's not talk about it now. I'm... <laughs> well, I'm kind of sleepy. All right. I'm leaving early tomorrow, Mary. Before I go, I've got a lot of things to tell you. Yes. Good night, Zach. Good night, Mary. I love you very much. I want to kiss you. Zack. Oh, Zack. Is that you, Mary? Mary, dear. Mary, are you all right? Oh, Aunt Sarah, I love him so. What are you going to do, Mary? I don't know. He's going to ask me to marry him. Have you told him about yourself? No. Are you going back with him on the train tomorrow? Oh, how can I? I'm afraid to be alone with him now. Oh, Aunt Sarah, I mustn't tell him. And, and I lied to him at the dance. I told him I was going to stay there a couple of extra days. Oh, don't you think he's strong enough yet to know about you? I don't know. And I can't take that chance. He's getting well. I want him to go back to that hospital sure of himself. Of himself. And of me. Remember, dear. What you have to do may seem to be second best. But it may work out to be first best after all. Oh, Aunt Sarah, I hope so. Oh, evening, Sergeant. Should say good morning. Happy New Year. Thanks, you too. Have a good time tonight at the uh -huh, dance? Oh, wonderful. So you're checking out tomorrow, you said? That's right, and I want to thank you. I've enjoyed my stay here very much. That's fine, son, <clears throat> fine. Well, I'll see you later on. Good evening, room. Happy New Year, room. Happy New Year, Zach. May I have this dance with you, Sergeant? Oh, and may I be the first to... <gasps> oh. The room... It's spinning. Hold on, Zack. Hold on, it's spinning like a top. Don't let it suck you in. Hold on, Zack. You're just a little tired, that's all. Try to avoid excitement. Don't tire yourself. Avoid excitement. Don't tire yourself. A lot of excitement, huh? The fight for the dog took a lot out of you. That's why you're sweating. Doesn't mean anything. Sit down, Zack. Sit down, sit down, sit down, Zack. Sit down, easy. Take it easy. Your heart, Zack, it's starting again. It's pounding away. Faster and faster. Don't get scared now. Don't get scared. Call a doctor. Then get in touch with us. Any army hospital. Call a doctor. It's just one of those things, Zack. He told you it might happen. Hang on. It's sure banging away. Heck, your, your heart doesn't really sound that loud. You're just thinking it does, that's all. 
The doc told you there's nothing wrong with your heart. Beating fast like that doesn't mean a thing, it doesn't. It doesn't. Stop kidding yourself. This is it. You're in for it now. You thought for a minute it wasn't, but it is. You know the next step. You know what's coming now. You better call for a doctor. Let him get that hypo ready. Tub of ice water. It's coming, Zach. It's coming. Zach, you've got a week to believe. A week. You must believe. You must believe. You must believe. You must believe. Sarah, I'm downstairs. Breakfast ready? Just a minute, dear. Barbara's down too. She's getting dressed. Where's Mary? In the kitchen with me. One egg or two, dear. Three. I'm hungry. Work on those eggs. I'll get the door. They're coming, dear. They'll be ready in a minute. Morning, Mr. Marshall. Oh, hello, Zach. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Come on in. Have a good time last night? Best party I've been to since last New Year's. Had your breakfast yet? Yes, sir. Now I go. Well, here's the newspaper. Make yourself at home. Be with you in a minute. Thank you. I'll drive you down to the station. Who was it, dear? Uh, Zach. Morning, Mary. Good morning, Uncle Henry. He's in the living room. Zach? Morning. Hello. I was just fixing some sandwiches for the train. Oh, wonderful. Mary, don't you think you'd better get ready? I'll finish that. Yes, I'd better. I'll be down in a minute. Go sit down, Henry. Your eggs are ready. Yes, ma'am. We won't be long, Zach. Hope you don't mind. Well, take your time. Besides, here comes Barbara. Hello, Sergeant. Happy New Year. Hello, Barbara. Hi, oh, you look nice. Thank you. Is that your bag out there? Uh-huh. Gee, you sure look a lot better than you did a week ago. I feel a lot better. You think the Marshall food did it? <laughs> I think it was mostly your cousin Mary. Oh, she's awfully nice. Yeah, I've noticed that, too. You know what? I think I'll marry her. Are you kidding? Well, not as far as I'm concerned. Well, won't you mind waiting? Well, well, it's up to Mary. Things have worked out so well that, well, I may not have to wait as long as I thought. Yes, and the fact that they let her out of prison for Christmas is a pretty good sign. What are you talking about? You know, it wasn't until the other night when she told me how it all happened that I realized it wasn't her fault at all. She's not a criminal. Criminal? I mean, like a real criminal. Oh, it's too bad you two can't go back on the train together. But then Mary isn't due in Easton until 9 o'clock, and she wants to spend as much time with us as she can. After all, being in that awful place for three whole Come years. On, Zach. We're going to be late. Mary. Well, goodbye, Zach. Zach. Is there something wrong? Wrong? Well, have a nice trip and come back real soon. Oh, Zach. Zach, I hate to say goodbye. Thank you again, Mrs. Marshall. Good luck. And here, here's your sandwiches. Thank you. Mary, hurry, dear. Coming. You sure have been quiet, Zach. But I catch on. Three's the crowd, huh? No, no, I, I, I didn't mean that. Now, this. Zach, is there any special address, or do I just write to you in care of the hospital in Easton? What? Yeah, uh, care, care of the hospital. Zach. I, I, it'll get there, all right. And you can write me in care of Uncle Henry. Sure, we'll forward it to wherever she is. Okay. Because I won't know what hotels I'll be stopping at. Sure, and I... sure. Well, well, goodbye. Goodbye, Zach. You will write to sure, me. Sure, I'll write, and thanks again, Mr. Marshall. It was nothing, boy. Zach. What's the matter? What's wrong? Wrong? Don't... Well, not a thing. Not a thing in the world. Goodbye, Zach. Goodbye. Good luck, Zach. Look, he's not even waving, Uncle Henry. Oh, what's the matter, I wonder? He acted kind of strange ever since we left the house, hmm? I think I know. Zach! Zach! He's gone, Mary. Oh, he knows. He knows about me. He knows. <laughs> Barbara, Dad'll want another cup when they get back. Mother, if you'd been in Mary's place, wouldn't you have gone along with Zach? Don't ask so many questions. Well, as long as Zach's willing to wait until Mary's out of prison, I don't see why... Prison? Barbara, 
Barbara, you didn't tell him. Who wasn't Zach supposed to know? Oh, Barbara. Oh, why didn't anybody tell me? Why didn't you warn me? I should have. I should have. Oh, Mary's always treated me like a grown-up. I didn't want to hurt her. Now I've done something terrible again. They're coming in. Quiet. No, I've got to tell her. I've got to. Mary, Mary. Oh, Mary, I... I'm so ashamed of myself. Please forgive me. Mary, I love you. But I didn't know. I told oh, him, Mary. Don't cry, I told Barbara. Him. Please don't cry. <laughs> he had to know sometime. At least he didn't know until the last moment. That's something. Oh, please, darling, don't. Well, I'll go pack now. Come and help me, Barbara. There's a train in an hour, I... I think I'd like to leave as soon as I can. Who is it? I'm reporting back. Oh, it's you. Marshal, isn't it? That's right. Have a good time? Aren't you going to open the gate? You've got a little time yet, sister. What are you talking about? Down at the corner. The guy's been waiting for you. Down at... Zach... When you're ready, just pound the bell again. <laughs> Mary, I... I didn't want to make you cry. Well, there's nothing wrong with crying at a time like this. The minute I got on the train, I knew why you didn't tell me. Oh, nothing matters, except that you're here. I'm terribly ashamed for walking out like that. I need you, Mary. I want to feel that you need me. Oh, but I do. I do. I'll be right here. I'll be right here waiting. I'll be all well by then and ready to make a new start, too. I love you so much, Zach. I love you so much. Oh, we'll get by, darling. Yes, I think we'll do just fine. Just fine. Our stars will return in a moment for a curtain call and a word about our play for next week. Tomorrow, for the first time in two, three, even four years, millions of men throughout the country will be eating Christmas dinner with their families. The war is over for them, but their wives still have a job to do for their country. What kind of a job, Mr. Kennedy? A job that will help all of us during reconversion, saving used fats. But fats aren't rationed anymore. That's just the point. Although food fats aren't rationed, there is actually less fat than ever for industry. But can't we import more? Not yet. The islands in the Pacific that used to send us millions of pounds of oils a year still aren't producing. So, for example, the people who make soap have to share the available oils with other industries. That's why you can't always get all the soap you want. Will saving used fats help? Yes. These fats are released for all sorts of heavy industry. That means more of the fine oils can go into soap. Looks as if I'd better start right off saving again, Mr. Kennedy. Good for you. This week, you'll have an extra supply of used fat. Start by pouring the grease from the breakfast bacon or sausage into a tin can. Then add the drippings from your Christmas turkey or goose, and don't forget to skim the giblet gravy after the dinner, and the turkey soup later in the week. Do I get anything for these fats? Yes, indeed. Your dealer will give you four cents for every pound you turn in. But more than that, if you and every housewife in the country save used fat now as you did in wartime, soap supplies will become more plentiful. You won't have to wait for your favorite brand. Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Tonight, we've received one Christmas present a day early in the form of two superb performances by Joseph Cotton and Dorothy McGuire. Thank you, Bill. And I'm sure now that you're both eager to get back to your families and those Christmas trees. Sounds good to me, Bill. I've been away for so long on location. How's that uh, Technicolor epic, Duel in the Sun, coming, Joe? Well, we're still working on it. You, Jennifer Jones, Gregory Peck, and half of Hollywood. You don't actually fight a duel in that picture, do you, Joe? Why, of course not, Dorothy. You know how the early West was. Nothing more violent than harsh words at 20 paces. <laughs> Tell me, Bill, what about your next play on Lux? For New Year's Eve, next Monday night, we have what is certainly one of the most gripping pictures of the year. It's Warner Brothers' Pride of the Marines. Starring in their original screen roles... John Garfield, Eleanor Parker, and Dane Clark. If you feel like entering the new year with an extra measure of hope and courage in your heart, you'll find it in this deeply moving drama 
of a wounded veteran who refuses to become a burden to the woman he loves. That's a very timely picture, with so many of the boys coming home from overseas, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and happy holidays. <laughs> Tomorrow is our first and long-awaited post-war Christmas, with families reunited and new hope throughout the land. But with our gratitude for peace should come a new conception of that word. For peace on earth has become a challenge the like of which the world has never known before. All of the nations of the earth are seeing themselves for the first time as fellow members of the human race who must work in peace together if they are to survive their common enemies, greed, intolerance, and pride. The future is squarely in our hands. May God guide us in its management and bless us not with wealth and ease, but with tolerance and wisdom. On behalf of our sponsors and those of us here in the Lux Radio Theater, may I wish you all a truly happy Christmas and invite you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents John Garfield, Eleanor Parker, and Dane Clark in Pride of the Marines. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. I'll Be Seeing You, produced by Dory Sherry, was presented through the courtesy of David O. Selznick, producer of Alfred Hitchcock's Spellbound. For its participation in American victory, the motion picture industry has received the official thanks of the United States government in the form of a bronze plaque detailing the industry's wartime achievements. Among these achievements is the contribution of 43,000 feature films for Army and Navy entertainment and morale. These films continue to make possible 6,000 movie shows a night covering every region where our men in uniform are stationed. Radio, too, continues to serve as a medium of entertainment and morale. And these Lux Radio Theater plays are broadcast to our men and women overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Pride of the Marines with John Garfield, Eleanor Parker, and Dane Clark. The Spry Treat of the Week. Spry Christmas Cookies, tender, full-flavored cookies made quickly and easily with new Easy Mix Spry. Keep the cookie jar full during the holidays. Remember, for digestible, full-flavored foods, you need pure, bland, all-vegetable shortening at its creamy best. That's Spry, S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Pride of the Marines with John Garfield, Eleanor Parker, and Dane Clark. And why not tune in a half hour?